I just have so much garlic. So <laughs> like if I just did one patch, it'd be overwhelming. Yeah. So I might, I might dot it around in different areas. I might have to do that because my plan is to grow six to 800. Wait, why? Because you said you eat a, a head a day when you Easy. cook. Easy. Because like, here's the thing. We cook like 95% of our meals at home. A head a day though. Yeah. If I'm making yeah. anything for dinner, yeah. a whole head's going in. Really? Most people put like two or three cloves in. Not us. Not, not, <laughs> not you guys. Not us. <laughs> We're back, Jacques. We are. We're back on the pod. Feels like summer, but it's still fall. <laughs> a little bit. It's chilly in the morning, though. I'll, I'll tell you that. This morning I woke up a little bit cold. Did you? In that mid 50s range, I need a sweater. Yeah. I've been, yeah. I mean, I've been wearing jackets. <laughs> you are. Yeah. I've been wearing jackets. It's, I think I'm a fall guy. Yeah. Fall is the perfect kind of weather gap, I think. I'm a fall guy and I'm a spring guy. Okay. But I'm, I'm honestly, for a Southern California native, I'm not a summer guy. You're a shoulder guy. You're on the shoulder, shoulder seasons. seasons. Yeah. Summer, here's a, here's my take before we get started is summer is the worst season. I actually kind of agree. It's only good for gardening, yeah. nothing else. Here's what you listeners have to remember. You're talking to a guy <laughs> who doesn't like the ocean at all. At all. Yeah. So that's part of it because that will cool you down in the summer. Yeah, that's true. And we live right next to one. Yeah. And you could go. I could. But I'm kind of with you from even from I like a, looking at it, by the way. From a gardening go perspective, I find summer to be slightly sometimes too long. Mm. It's a little too long for me. I'm like, by the time I'm ready to go into brassica season, my lettuces, whatever, yeah. I'm like, finally, you know? Because that summer season creeps into fall. Yeah. Let's be real. Well, it's, uh, Octo it's, yeah. it's late October as we <laughs> record this right now, yeah. and it's, it's kind of hot. It'll probably be 78 today. Yeah. And I'm not complaining, but I'm not not no. complaining. But it does look like the fall winter garden is coming because coming. there's nothing behind us. Yeah, well, there's there's some burlap down yeah. there with the uh, carrots underneath. There's some broccoli and some cabbages. Mm -hmm. The peppers are still hanging on. Yeah, but and a lot of way, thinning. If, yeah, if you're listening to the show, try watching the show. It's on YouTube, The Beat Podcast. Yeah. You can find it. You'll see our beautiful faces <laughs> laughing, enjoying. But yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's transitioning to fall. And I, I always kind of hate this time because the garden starts to look bad, quote, yeah. bad. But it's not actually bad. It's just like... You got to reset at some point. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like that early spring season where things are coming in, but it's a little bare. Yeah. The only downside with the fall season is that everything grows a bit slow. Yeah. But once it gets going, it does get going. So you have some broccoli starts that are pretty big. Yeah, and they're sizing up. Honestly, they're probably only a few weeks away from starting to produce florets. I think so. And I'm about in the same place. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You got cauliflower in too? I have some cauliflower. I have a little bit of everything. Yeah. So I have like a couple collies, a couple cabbages, broccolis. I put three Brussels and that's all I'm doing. I'm not uh, going to do any more. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I feel like Brussels, are, if you could go big with them. Yeah, you, they're you still pretty temperamental much a, though. You, you pretty much eat a stock per meal though. Yeah. You know? The only, here's the thing is I would love to grow more Brussels, but they just are so temperamental. Mm. There's that time period in spring where they start to develop. Yeah. And they're just about perfect. And then there's a little heat wave and they get covered they're in done. aphids. Yeah, they're done. Um, so and it's too stressful. What I will say too, to agree with you, is that because of the way they grow, there's just so many pockets yes. for aphids and Earwigs. stupid things to get yeah. up in there versus a cabbage, which technically there are. So if, if your cabbage doesn't grow with a nice tight head, mm -hmm. you've made some sort of growing flaw, then yeah, you, you might get aphids down in those pockets yeah. and that's a dirty surprise. Oh. Because you cut that in half and you start seeing the little pockets. That's why I don't grow Napa anymore. Because really? Because it just gets filled with earwigs. It's too open. It's too yeah. open. It's too open. It's like cr crinkled newspaper, their favorite thing. I think in, in our climate though, I think you got to grow cabbage undercover for most of the growing phase. I think you got to grow it. I mean, to me, if I was really saying, hey, you're going to try to grow saleable cabbage, mm -hmm. I'd have it undercover for half its life. Yeah, especially in the beginning of the season, I find that like the loopers and the cabbage worms, they tend to disappear once actual winter has begun. Yeah. Or Which maybe they're like so maybe, slow. Maybe December. Yeah. Yeah. But up until then, it's like the worst time. Like yeah. right now I see them flying around my seedlings and I've had a whole flat of brassica seedlings erased, erased over a weekend just because I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. And they got covered in worms. So well, we just we just started some some new experiments in the test yeah. garden, and cabbages were our plan of choice. Yes. And now we have to restart one of them after three days. Yeah. Because the loopers got to them, and it's crazy how fast those guys eat. You know. Yeah. No, that's why this time, because if we're gonna pull off a fair experiment, we have to make sure that one of the plants didn't get eaten by caterpillars right. before it had a chance to compete. Right. So we're gonna restart them. The same starts. It's not like anything got lost. And we're going to put uh, those critter covers on top. 
So that way the butterflies and the moths can't get to the plant to lay the eggs so that the caterpillars destroy everything. Yeah. So that's the hope at least. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll see if it works out. It should. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking around. I see th some things I need to work on though, to be honest <laughs> with you. That's what I did a little bit of yesterday. So this time of year, it's like you said, it's kind of hard to pull everything because yeah. you don't want your garden to be actually empty. Yeah. So I tend to do it in stages. And yesterday I walked around and I pulled up all the leftover squash vines, the watermelon vines, um, the pepper plants that are starting to look a little bit sadder that have like lived their life. I just cleaned up. Mm -hmm. It made a ton of space. I did now it feel have, good? It did feel really good. Yeah. Like a <laughs> very relaxing sort of release. But I now have like four beds and I could plant them out. So that's what I'm excited for. I think I'm going to actually plant my first garlic bed next week. Oh, really? I was going to talk to you about that. Because yeah. last couple of years, I mean, a good, good garlic crop last year, but I made a grower's error and uh, let them get watered for too long. Oh, right. At the end. As I was letting the stalks die off. Uh, and then the year before I had pretty gnarly rust. So I still got garlic, yeah. but I just, I really only got cloves out of those bulbs because I had to right, isolate the, storage the, the, wasn't the good, good cloves. Yeah. Um, so this year, a lot more garlic. Yeah. So we, we have, we might still have some left on the store, but with 12 varieties that we shipped out. Yes. And we also grabbed some extra garlic as well. So I have a lot of garlic to plant. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I want it to work out. Like I really want this year to be a good year. To me, what I found, at least in our climate, is that it's the, it's the timing. Yeah. And so... I'm curious, why are you starting it next week? The main reason I hadn't started it, because I have soft neck and hard neck. Right. The hard neck, I need to keep in the fridge for a month. And so right now, I think it's been in the fridge for two weeks. Um, but the soft neck could go in at any point now. Mm -hmm. And since I have the space, I have the bed free, I'm like, might as well just plant it. That's yeah. the only intention I had for that bed anyway. Oh. So I figured I'll get my soft neck in, the space is available. I don't really lose anything by planting it now versus planting it in a few weeks. There's no downside to me, uh, but the hard neck, I'm still figuring out where it's going to go. Mm. And it also still needs more time in the fridge. Yeah. I got to toss mine in the fridge because I've experimented with the full, like three months in a fridge, true mm -hmm. winter oh, simulation. Yeah. And then I've experimented with um, maybe six weeks. I don't know if I've ever done a month, Yeah. but this year I might have to do a month because it's not in the fridge yet and it's late October. So I might just have to do a month. I think four to happens. six weeks is... Good. Probably fine. Yeah. And then yeah. once you get it in, even though it's San Diego, December is chilly. So even if you planted it in the beginning of December into yeah. January, there is enough cold period there where if you got four good weeks in the fridge, I think you'll be fine. Probably be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I like having it harvest sometime around June. Mm -hmm. So to me, if I was to plant it in like early October, it's a five, five month crop yeah. maybe. So uh, I guess it's maybe it be a little a, earlier. I guess sometimes. it's a six month crop most of the time. Like yeah. a, a lot of these are 180 to 220. Yeah. But that's in more normal climates. Totally. So for us, it grows faster. That's what I found this year. It was maybe May that it started yeah. coming out or early. I actually early really like that. Yeah. Personally. Well, then you get to cook it through the summer. That's which the, is nice. The main thing I like, and it's kind of a weird hack, is that actually growing hard neck in San Diego, I find you put it in the fridge and then you plant it. Uh, it'll actually grow faster especially if you put it in the fridge in fall. Yeah. Because now it thinks winter's already like started. Right. And by the time you get through January, it's like spring is here in February mm -hmm. and you have garlic by May. And the beauty yeah. for, of that for me is that it means that in May, I actually get that entire space back. I don't have to wait till June, July when maybe it's a little bit too late to put in another pepper bag. Yeah. So any summer crop it, when yeah. you harvest that garlic totally. out, will, will so work out. To yeah. me, it's an advantage because I get to claw back some of that space. Where in early spring, I'm okay with losing some of that space. Mm -hmm. I'm mostly working through some of the early planted stuff. Yeah. But once I get into June and May especially, I want space for peppers, tomatoes, squash, eggplant, all that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, are you doing anything different with your garlic this year? I don't think so. I mean, I think on a planting level, it's been fine. Yeah. The problems have really come from a, a soil issue with the rust or my own problem just not turning my water off but i think like spacing etc now i did move it to the front yard last year because yeah. of the rust in the backyard yes i'm considering putting it in the backyard mm -hmm. actually probably where the peppers are right now oh okay i have yeah. never had a soil borne disease in that area and my onions did well there yeah, this year that's true so i'm like okay they're both alliums let's see if that works out and that's a lot of space like I it is have, a lot of space i could have a ton of money but something i also really liked was this year I did have an onion patch mm -hmm. but 
I would say 30% of the onions I grew were kind of dotted around the property. Yeah. Just little stars. You just kind of shoved them everywhere because they don't, as long as they've got like six inches clearance around them, you kind of just grow them. And so in that same pepper bed, I had 40 onions maybe come yeah, up. Yeah, they were just sneaking in there. They were just dotted, you know? So you'd come in, it felt more like a, like a pantry almost because you yeah. come in and you just get the one you need instead of walking out to the row or the patch because the patch all comes ready at the same time. You know what I mean? Right. So it had totally. a bit of a more natural feel. So who knows? I might, I just have so much garlic. So <laughs> I, like if I just did one patch, it'd be overwhelming. Yeah. So I might, I might dot it around in different areas. I might have to do that because my plan is to grow six to 800. Really? This year. That much? Like I'm trying to go a little bit crazy. Wait, why? <laughs> so every That's year so many? we grow around two to 300. Okay. And it's never lasted us like past November. I'm already out. You're already out. Like yeah. I'm into October now. It's not even November. I am entirely out of my homegrown garlic. Wow. Okay. Because that's how intense. Like, I think we probably eat more garlic than anyone else I know you, by far. You Because you said you eat a, cl a head a day when you easy, cook. Easy. Easy. Because like, here's the thing. We cook like 95% of our meals at home. A head a day though. Yeah. If I'm making yeah. anything for dinner, yeah. a whole head's going in. Really? Most people put like two or three cloves in. Not us. Not, not, you not guys. us. So you just... So. And everyone in the household is down. It's not so, like it's just me forcing. Wait, so how are you de... <laughs> how are you getting the whole... What's your technique for getting the, the skins off? I mean, because you must have a technique. I have a couple a different day. methods. I have a couple different methods. Okay, so talk, first, talk I cut off the bottom. I'm separating cloves. I cut off the root. The easiest thing, if you're only doing a couple cloves, cut off the root, like the very bottom part, lay it down, put a knife on, and then tap Smash it. Smash it. Yeah. And then the, the skin will literally just come off. Yeah. Most of the time. If you cut the root off. If you cut the root off. Smart. Um, the other one you could do is you could do a little, if you don't want to smash it, yeah. you could cut a little slit into like the wider part of the clove. Yeah. And then just like knock your knife to the side a little bit. And then that peel will just come off. It like comes around it. It like comes it. off like an envelope. Yeah, I see. I see. Uh, the other one, last one I'll mention, if you're doing a lot of garlic, is you cut off the bottom roots on like the whole head. You just chop it off. You break apart the cloves. You put it on a little plate in the microwave, 10 to 20 seconds. That little bit of heat creates a tiny bit of steam and mm. the cloves pop right out. Uh, like instantly. You could just press them. They every single right clove out. will just pop out. So if That's you're doing garlic a bread, very good tip. then you're yeah. you're good. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, so but for garlic bread, you could also do the roasted garlic. Yes. You cut the bottoms off, you don't take the papers out at all, yeah, you yeah, squeeze yeah. the roasted garlic out afterwards. Yeah. That's turning it into a little condiment jar, that's, which is, that's which good is stuff nice. Too. Yeah. Then, so the one I like just for the gadgetry of it is that <laughs> one silicone tube. I hate those. Dude, I, I, I like them. I don't know why. I, I just, yeah. you just do that. It does work pretty well. It works pretty well. But for some reason I hate it. For, for me, it's more the feeling. <laughs> okay. You know, it's more yeah. just the rolling feeling. I don't know. It's very satisfying. Yeah. When it works, so. it is very satisfying. Yeah. But like putting all the cloves in a bowl and shaking it. I've never done that so one. So dumb. I, it just doesn't work for me. I've never done that one. You're supposed to just shake it and that's it? They're yeah. If you put them in there and like bang them around, allegedly they just knock themselves out, but it, they don't. I don't know about that. Maybe if you cut the roots off, they would, but maybe I don't know. But anyway, so I have like feels aggressive. Six to nine hundred plans, and here's a little formula for you guys at home. If you're trying to figure out how much garlic to fit, and you want to do six inch spacing, length of your bed, width of your bed, multiply those number in feet. So four by eight, thirty two times four. Whatever that number is times four is how many cloves you could fit in your bed. Good so tip. So four by eight bed, hundred twenty eight cloves of garlic can be planted in that bed. So if you're doing the math, that means that I need at least four full four by eight beds. Mm -hmm. for four garlic. to five. Just for garlic. Just for my garlic. Yeah. So I'm assuming you're going happen. in the ground then. I'm going to go, one is going to be in a birdies four by eight because I want that nice tall raised bed. Yeah. Uh, drainage. Oh, so and... you're going to do it in a tall guy. No, sorry. Not tall. I'm saying tall because I'm comparing it to the in ground. The ground, yeah. But yeah, like a standard size bed. And I'm going to put my soft necks in that because I think that it'll be a little bit warmer. And I'm going to put my hard necks in the ground where it's a little bit cooler. Mm -hmm. So that's the plan. Okay. And I might dot my garlic around. Some people like to companion plant with garlic because it reduces diseases and could keep pests away. Allegedly, especially around cabbages, it could help and brassicas. Um, but for me, that's kind of a game. I don't want to have to remember for six, not even remember, you could see it. But for six months, I have this garlic plant that's just going to sit yeah. in that one spot. And that's the kind of thing that triggers me. Uh, like even though I'm a little chaotic interesting that <laughs> when there's you. like you have a tree collar that's 42 years old I know but here's the thing is it it's in its corner yeah and it's staying if it if it's like something in the middle of my bed now I'm like dude what am I supposed to do with this bed like now I have this random plant here yeah. I can't broad fork it just plant around it I have to like plant it. yeah it's yeah. Just, I just don't like it yeah 
Well, I, I'll say I wouldn't do the dotting planting method in a raised bed probably. Yeah. Unless that was just the thing I was doing for that whole bed. Totally. You know, like, but if I had like a bed of peppers and I randomly put two onions in, I wouldn't really do that. But over here with this pepper bed, that was totally fine yeah. because these guys are going to stay forever. And the onions, exactly. like, as long as they aren't actually right up next to the roots of something else, they're, they'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And so that worked out. So yeah, I don't know where I'm going to put my garlic this year, but we'll have to see. Is there anything else you're trying to grow really excited to grow this fall? Um, the other ones that I'm excited are just like the trigen trees. I think the only new thing that I'm growing for sure is that for some reason this year I am trying to grow radicchio. Mm. Uh, and it does look really pretty. Mm. I do like that. Um, I am planning on doing more onions, but I can never actually remember when I plant my onions. I can't remember if I usually do it now or in spring. Um, you could do it either. You could do it either. Here at least you could, you do, could it do it either. Yeah. Oh, actually, I am excited this year. <laughs> My biggest limitation this year is space. Okay. And I might need to tap into uh, somebody else's property <laughs> to, to plant some of the stuff I want. Are you trying to come over here? <laughs> I don't know if you have something <laughs> to give. Because uh, I want to do grains. I want to do uh, wheat. I want to do oats. I got a variety. <laughs> I already got the seed, even though I have no plans on where to put it. <laughs> of wholeless oat. So an oat uh, where you don't have to separate it. Yeah, yeah. You could just somehow winnow it and it's ready to go. And also I want to try growing rye. So I want to try... Wheat, oats, and rye, triple thread of grains. So you've grown wheat before. I have grown but you wheat. you have not grown rye or oats. No. And why are you trying to grow the rye and the oats? What are you trying to do with them? Just to eat them. Just eat them? Yeah. Like the a little wheat, cereal? Like to make a, a rye bread. I'll mm. do the rye for that. Mm. The oats, I'm honestly just curious. Yeah. Uh, oats are like kind of a cool, useful food. And for me, it's I kind of just want to experience how to grow staples. Mm -hmm. The things that people are used to eating over time. I want to see how easy is that? How did you do it in the past? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just this very satisfying thing. Like That's what got me into wheat in the yeah, first place. Making that bread, yeah. it's like a magical experience. And eating it, mm -hmm. it's hard to get anything to taste better than when you the, grow wheat on your own. I mean, you had that loaf, yeah. that first loaf totally. that I grew. That was during my earlier sourdough yeah. phase. So my sourdough wasn't as good, but the, the flour was at least. Yeah. And so, yeah. So I've grown, let me see, grain wise, I've grown wheat, I've grown quinoa and I've grown amaranth. Oh yeah. And I think that's it. You've messed around with those like Job's Tears things, right? Oh, Job's that's Tears. technically a grain. I guess so. I yeah. It's, yeah, I, I grew those. I got those from Baker Creek like six years yeah. ago and grew those And we've out. done flour corn. Oh, that's true. Yeah. You, which well, I guess we'll count. Is that you technically more, You more than me. I, I've <laughs> grown it, but I didn't actually grind it. Oh, okay. You did. I do actually have, um, like 20 cob saves of my Oaxacan green corn mm -hmm. that I will be nixtamalizing and making into tortillas. Okay, yeah. So I'm very excited about and that. And you did that, I think, a couple of years yeah. ago, too. Yeah, so. we do it for Christmas. Uh, we'll nixtamalize our corn. Save the tamales. husks and do tamales. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Why not? Totally. Yeah, so I I want to grow, I don't know, oats would be interesting. Rye, eh, I could yeah. take it or leave it, but oats would be interesting. I think, I still think growing wheat really well is attractive to me but every time i've grown it it's i've gotten wheat like mm -hmm. no problems at all but like if you think about input seed versus output yield yeah it, it's not a you know no farmers writing home about my yeah. yields um <laughs> and so i want to see usually it's supposed to be like five or eight to one i think i got about five x yeah five x is like the floor Four to i think five, is I what think you kind of want got on the my first time i ever grew it i got 1.2 x or something and i remember because we found this this old like farming article and it was <laughs> this quote i don't know you might remember it but yeah, it was like yeah. if you're something with dust your grain bin will bust uh and the idea was that if you overwater wheat it does worse yeah i think we took that too literally and because, we just didn't water it <laughs> because we much. don't have rain yeah we don't have rain and everywhere yeah. else where they grow wheat they have rain yeah so they're like don't irrigate it and we're like all right like, i let's remember not irrigate that it. i remember uh, that and that was our own intuition error on that part that was a total fail it yeah. was right there it was actually, right there right over yeah. there and it was underneath it was sort of there's a tree where the mm -hmm. greenhouse is and um yeah i mean it was that tall at harvest yeah. you know a foot and a half tall at we harvest. should totally do it again it here. should be way taller it than looks that. amazing in the garden too oh yeah it's one yeah. of the most beautiful things in in like the sort of blue hour, mm -hmm. golden hour light. Ooh. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Nothing looks better. Nothing looks better. Golden wheat. Yeah, golden wheat. You know? Yeah. I told you once on, he, he had a, Jacques had a video a while back on growing wheat and then saving the straw, I think. Yeah. And I told you to do the gladiator intro. Yeah. Run your hands. I actually did film that. I had totally haven't finished that. You didn't right. use it though. I yeah. do. I need to tap that back in. Comment on this video and the <laughs> podcast or DM Jock and spam him to make him put that one up because that would be a funny one. That would be That'd a be good a funny one. one. Yeah. I Other mean, than that, those are kind of the things. I mean, I'm always excited for brassica season. 
Yeah. Because I love having yeah. it fresh out of the garden. I'm excited for um, the pond. Epic Pond's looking a little bit scarce right now. Mm. Um, Because we we actually almost lost all the water one day. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. From a really simple Weird problem. It it took a while for us to even identify it. Basically, on the pond, there's this bio falls. Mm -hmm. So there's a natural, well, it's it's not natural, it looks natural, (laughs) waterfall. But the way that that works is there's these little plastic balls in the water. Yep that capture a lot of surface area, they provide a lot of surface area for bacteria. Yeah, for beneficials. And one of those bags floated up, just barely tipping the water to go over the edge of the falls, not into the pond. And that literally drained thousands of gallons overnight. Um, Like 80% of the pond? 80% of the pond. To prevent that, we cleared out a lot of the vegetation Mm -hmm. around that because we're like, well, it's unpredictable now. Uh, And so the guys are coming back out. I got the word. Greg yeah. and team, maybe Brian from Team Aquascapes, they will be coming back out to do a full pond clean out as well as kind of decking the pond out with a couple extra upgrades like some lighting yeah. and um, a couple filtration systems and stuff like that. But I still think the pond itself could could use a little bit more... Um, scaping. Scaping or something, you know? There, it, it's just a little scarce right now. Well, now's actually a really good time of year... Now that you mention it, this is the time of year to do a lot of different things in the garden, Yeah, which uh, you guys should all know about. You could still plant trees right now. It's actually a great time to plant trees, especially in our area. In, our, in a warmer climate, um, yeah. Totally great time to establish them. Fruit trees or regular trees. Native plants right now, fantastic time to plant natives in especially our area. Check in your local region if it is. So we could totally escape with either natives or regular shrubs, whatever we want right now. Wait for the rainy season to help establish those roots Mm -hmm. because one of the hardest things to do in our climate is plant like try to establish these long-lived plants in the summer just because we don't get any rain yeah it's too challenging yeah i would say fall we we tried it last year at the pond by putting a bunch of that ground cover in and it it hung on for maybe a month or so Mm -hmm. and then just got roasted in a couple days and some of some of it we planted earlier this year and that did take and even some of that wasn't yet established enough yeah. by the time summer came. The shadier areas, it did work. So, yeah, I don't know. There, I, think I think maybe... If we do it now, before the rains, we'll, we should be good. Beautifying some of the, the pond space and, and some of the other areas. Sometimes I dream about a fresh coat of, of chips on, oh, man. on the garden. I need to order some chips. You know, because it's looking a little bit... You know, there's, there's definitely agree. some areas where it could use it. And that would just bring a lot of life back to the visuals. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't know, there's something to be said about the way it looks. It's why, why we're sad about a garden that's in transition. Similarly, you know, if you have the stuff around it, it's not looking that great. Yeah. You don't feel as good. And we it's a great this... time to do it. Yeah. Because there's space. You could see everything. And it's more pleasant to um, work in the garden on like a crisp morning yeah. uh, than blasted in the summer. Well, know? maybe uh, a little mulch fiesta party is coming soon. And yeah. it becomes that might be. spread. We mulch the be. entire garden. Then the, the final <laughs> dream I would have if there was a rainy fall yeah is like could i just go bonkers on the front yard and take all the bermuda grass out oh my god could i do that i mean if you want to do a workout plan where you pay nobody i'll lose 100 pounds hun- easy and that would you make would, me like you're, anorexic or something you would get uh <laughs> yeah if you lost 100 i can't lose 100 you'd probably get like the tendon strength that like An- alex honnold has yeah after pulling all that i'd bermuda. have rock climber strength yeah i'd have i'd have rock, rock climber strength again yeah because I used to climb. Exactly. And bring then I tore a tendon. Pulling Bermuda so, could bring you back. Yeah, it could, it could bring me back. <laughs> so I don't know. A lot, lot's going on in fall. Stay tuned, guys. We're going to have a lot coming in, in winter. Hopefully some fun stuff. And drop us a comment. What do you want to see us do in winter? What do you want to see us do? Obviously, we can still garden. A lot of you can. Yeah. So what do you want to watch? What do you want to hear us talk about? Throw it down in the comments if you're watching this on the Beat YouTube channel. Jock, I'll see you pretty soon. Yeah. Good luck in the garden, guys. And keep on growing. Thank you.